Welcome back. We're solving this constrained minimization problem to minimize the expected code word length. And we observed that our objective function here, f, is strictly convex, and that the set of valid queues is a convex set. And so now we're ready to apply Lagrange multipliers to try to find some critical points of f restricted to that set. So let's do that. So let's form the Lagrangian. The Lagrangian here is going to be a function of q and lambda, where lambda will be our Lagrange multiplier. So this is going to be f, our function f, which is, this is our objective function, pi log 1 over qi plus our Lagrange multiplier times our constraint, sum of the qi's minus 1. So this constraint is that this equals 0. And so what we're going to do is set the gradient equal to 0. So we will set the gradient with respect to q equal to 0. And we will set the derivative with respect to lambda. Lambda is just a, a real number. Set that equal to 0. But when we set that equal to 0, then we just get back our constraint. So we will have this constraint. And we would like to solve these equations for q and lambda. And if we can solve those equations for q and lambda, then the q's will give us a critical point of the restricted function, of this function restricted to the set of q's satisfying the constraint. So let's do that. Let's try to solve it. So, well, maybe just a brief mention to, to just remind you, if we can get a critical point of the restricted function, then we know that that will be a global minimum of the constrained problem because our, fu our restricted function is strictly convex. Okay, so let's, sol let's try to solve, this for the solve these equations right here. So we need to take the gradient with respect to q, and we've already basically done it. We've already taken the derivative of f, and then we just also have to take the derivative of the constraint. So we're going to have this thing. So we're going to have minus pi over qi log b. So we have minus pi over qi log b, or maybe natural log b. And then we have to take the derivative of this guy. So we're going to get just plus a lambda. We set that equal to zero for all i, right? Because when we differentiate with respect to, so this is, I'm differentiating with respect to qi. And then when we do that, we just get a one here and we just get one lambda. So now let's, let's see. So we can, let's, let's try to separate out lambda and let's use our constraints. So we have, we are also, we also have this thing, which we can use to try to solve. So let's move this over here. Um, let's see. And so yeah, let's move this over here and multiply the qi over. So we're gonna get, so we're gonna get pi over natural log b is lambda qi. And now, so let's sum over the i's. So let's sum over the i's. Maybe I'll just do it here sum over the i's, we're going to get 1 over natural log b, sum of pi, pi equals lambda sum of qi. And we know that the sum of the q's using this part of our equations that we're solving for is lambda. And the sum of the pi's is always 1. So this is 1 over natural log b. So that tells us that lambda is 1 over natural log b. And now let's plug that back in here so we can, or, or here, I guess. So if we plug in one over natural log of B for lambda here, then that's gonna cancel. And we just get that, we get that PI equals QI, or in other words, QI equals PI. We do this for all I, so that must be equal for all I's. So this is, this is the unique solution to this problem, to this, to these set of equations here.
Beautiful. So it's simple as could be. It couldn't be simpler. We just take the PIs to be the QIs. And now we are we're 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 almost there. We're basically there, right? Because Lagrange told us that if we could solve these equations, that would give us a critical point of the constrained function. And like we were just saying, since the constrained function is strictly convex, then and we get a critical point for it, then we know that in fact that that's a global min for the constrained problem. So we have our solution. All right, so let's let's see. So and of course we can we well, we got the the Qs and we did our change of variable. So maybe we should say, what are the Ls? Well, we just we just use the fact that that L i equals log log base b one over Q i, and we can get the that the Ls should be log base b one over p i. So this is going to be our minimizing solution. So let's write that down. So we have solved the problem. This was our, we were solving this problem and the solution P is the arg min. It's the value that minimizes over all Q's summing to one. This function, our objective function, PI log base B one over QI. And this is over all the positive, all Q's positive here. This is Q's positive. And or and, and also but by this change of variable, this gives us that L star, maybe I'll say, yeah, I'll say L star are our, our optimizing lengths of our original problem, well, close to our original problem that we were interested in solving, space here, of the expected length, and this is subject to the condition that 1 over b to the li is less or equal to 1, and, but we were also, we were sort of relaxing things a little bit, we were allowing real valued lengths, so summing over all real valued lengths, that satisfy the craft inequality, it's minimizing the expected code word length, we get that the minimizer is L star, where L star i is just this thing right here, log base b, 1 over p i. And that is our solution. Oh, this should be, sorry. For all i, l i, n r, not all, all. Okay. And let's also actually let's also write down not just what the minimizer, the minimizer is, but what the minimum is. So the min over these guys. Um, uh, yeah. So I'll just write it out again here. One over b to the l i less than one of this thing. L i p i is, well, it's the same as the minimum of this because we just did the, our change of variable. And the minimum of this is obtained when we plug in our minimizing Qs. And our minimizing Qs were just the Ps. Or I mean, I guess we could have just plugged in here, the, plugged in the minimizer here. So the minimizer is of this problem. We just plug in log base B of one over Pi for the lengths. So it is one it's the sum over i's of pi log base b 1 over pi. All right. So now let's think briefly. You know, we made some simplifying assumptions. One of uh, our simplifying assumptions was that we allowed the lengths to all just be arbitrary real numbers, but we all we are certainly going to need them to be non-negative. So what did we get for our solution? Was it non-negative? Well, the PIs are all positive and um, less than one. So this is, you know, there, this is uh, 
between, since all of them are positive, then none of them is going to be equal to one. So in fact, well, even if it were equal to one, you get zero. But in particular, so this number here, we're taking log of something which is greater or equal to one. And so log of that is going to be a non-negative number. So the lengths that we get, in fact, are all non-negative numbers. So that's a good sign. So that simplifying assumption actually, so that actually becomes the min over you know, so we ended up with something that, that actually was a valid result. So that's good. But we're not guaranteed, you know, we also had the constraint that these needed to be integers and we're not guaranteed that this is going to be an integer. So what can we say about the problem with integers? Well, here, this, so this is minimizing over real lengths. If we consider the, the minimization over integer valued lengths, same thing. Well, this, this problem right here is in even more constrained. This one's more, we're, 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 we're minimizing over more stuff here, right? So this one is certainly going to be less or equal to this one. So this is going to be less or equal. This is less or equal than this because we're minimizing over more stuff. And this here is less or equal to any particular L that we get, you know, for any given set of lengths. So maybe I'll put, you know, uh, L prime. For any lengths that we choose, L prime, this is always going to be greater or equal to this because, you know, by definition, this is the, you know, where, where the L primes are actually valid, you know, valid integers and they form a code you know there are there's actually a code with these then this is going to be greater or equal to this just because this is by definition the min and so we have that in fact this function right here of the p's is a lower bound on the expected code word length for any code that any valid you know any code that that we're going to define Right, so just to recap our assumptions here, we assumed our, you know, we, and that's all, so it's subject to assuming that, that B is greater or equal to two, which almost always that's going to be the case. So under that, under that situation at least, and under the situation when all our, pos, uh, our probabilities are positive, then we're going to have this result. And this assumption right here, of course, you know, uh, to get the exact, exactly that lower bound you would, you would have to um, allow this, but the, the bound holds for the integer valued guys. Okay, so we have this bound. So th this bound, it's, this it seems to be some sort of fundamental quantity, some, some important function here of the P. So maybe we should give it a name. So let's call this function something. Well, in fact, of course, as you are probably aware it does have a name already and it is the entropy so h of p is the entropy for this distribution and it is the sum over p i's log well so this will be the base b entropy when we are taking log base b of one over p i and that is the definition of information entropy. So when Claude Shannon first was discovering information theory, he came across this function as some super fundamental thing. And then later, you know, and so he was trying to come up with a name for it. And he, you know, he played around with some different names. And then, but he wasn't aware that in fact, the exact same function is the entropy in thermodynamics. And it was, it was, uh, it was first discovered by by um, by Boltzmann, Ludwig Boltzmann, and generalized by Josiah Gibbs. And so, when when uh, when Shannon was trying to come up with a name for this, it was a very fortunate incident that he ended up being in contact with John von Neumann. And even though Shannon didn't know that, in fact, this function is the, the same as the thermodynamic entropy up to some constant. You know, this is all because logs are only determined up to some constant. Then, so, and but von Neumann said, hey, well, 
that is exactly the same thing as thermodynamic entropy. So you should call it entropy. And of course, Shannon did. And now we have that this function is the entropy. And it is, so we have, so our result, our beautiful result here, is that this function is a lower bound on the expected code word length for any valid uniquely decodable code. So we could summarize this in the following way. Maybe I'll just, in shorthand, H is less or equal to L. L is our expected code word length. So we have this lower bound. So we now have, you know, we, we have some information about how good we can do with a symbol code. We, we know that we can never do better than the entropy. You can't beat the entropy. And even further, we have a clue about how to do well, right? Because we know when we were minimizing over all real valued lengths, that the optimizing lengths were given by this function right here, log of base b one over pi. And so this gives us a clue as to how one might go about choosing a good set of lengths. So we'll, 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 we'll explore that, we'll start to explore that next in what's called Shannon coding. So this, this relationship between L's and P's is sort of a fundamental duality between length and probability, between message length and probability. And th there's sort of a, a sort of fundamental duality between thinking of things in terms of probabilities and thinking in things of term in terms of lengths. And this is the relationship that characterizes that duality. So this is an important equation right here. Oh, try to draw that neatly, do it justice. And one final remark, a uh, notational sort of remark here is that h sub b is the base b entropy and you might rate h sub 2 for the base 2 entropy but because b is so often equal to 2 then people just abbreviate h h of p for h sub 2 of p and you might also see this written as so because log of 1 over something is minus log of that thing Oftentimes you'll see this written as minus the sum, in this case it would be base 2, pi log pi. Okay. So at last we have reached the fruits of our labor and we saw that entropy is a lower bound on our expected code word length.